Hello. Today we're gonna try something different. I am gonna... I'm gonna try to reach out correctly today. We're not gonna use any add-ons. We're not gonna use any applications. I actually have Twitch open and YouTube. So uh, let's see how that goes. Um, but welcome, welcome. And hi, Jawi. Really nice of you all to pop in already. Um, I kind of teased we might... We just might do some rifts today. Um, but I want to chill. I was tired as well. I actually almost missed my own stream. But thank God my wife woke me up. Um, so instead we're gonna be chilling. I need to do rifts. But I'm gonna do the level ones. I kind of want to gather a bit. But before we get to that, I had the ID after yesterday's stream. What if we make a build that can solo any champion by auto attacking? I don't know if it's possible, but we're gonna try something today. Oh, and welcome, Samsung. So nice to have you here as well. Really cool to see like people people popping in. As I go live, makes it much easier to do a little intro. So yeah, we're gonna do that. I'm actually undecided as to which class we're, we're, I'm, I'm gonna swap to the game screen actually, but I am undecided as to which class or profession rather we wanna try to make an auto attack build on. I think auto attacking every champion is probably a bit of a pipe dream, but we're gonna try. And actually, Let's start with Guardian, because we, we have Aegis. What can go wrong? Yeah, Mirage, and thank you for popping in, uh, Autumn. And yeah, Mirage really does sound great. Um, I think it's probably the closest to a surefire build that can solo anything, because we basically press one button, the dodge button, and we can't stand still. Um, I know... Spellbreaker can do it, but with the easier champions, so let's not take a Spellbreaker. Um, let's, let's just try with the Hammer Guardian. And if people have missed my first stream, I'll, I'll show you why I'm thinking Hammer Guardian. Yeah, exactly. Depends on the champs. Um, it depends on the champs. We're gonna start with some of the easier ones, but if we can solo a champion in Heart of Thorns, like, it's always 10 hero points, right? Um, so if we would get all buffs, so if we would get the hate bot protocols, this is why I was thinking Guardian. This is also a build that you'll see in about two weeks. Um, I kind of want to trick nine others into raiding or doing strikes first, but this isn't a full auto attack build. We, we don't do anything. Um, and we'll do 25, 26k DPS. Um, basically all you need to clear literally any encounter in the game. So this is pretty chill. So I thought, well, let's not change too much to this build and just take it to some random champions, see what works, what doesn't. I am gonna, I am gonna be picking up Jadebot protocols. Um, like, I'll probably have to... Temper my expectations somewhat, be a bit realistic. But uh, let's see like what we can do with this build. If things go wrong, I do have a second Aegis slot on the utility skill, so why not, right? Yeah, the, the, the one... Um, like the, the ogre... Uh, what is this? Is it an ogre? Like the, the troll champion, right, uh, Rory? Like, I think that one is a really easy and good test. Uh, yeah, you can, uh, DD4, you can actually just auto attack for raids. And even crazier, if you want to do something extra for your team, just use advance every time you see the boss do a swing move, do something. I've been using this to clear um, cosmic... Observatory CM strike and I just timed the extra Aegis for my team with the with the boss swinging her sword basically which uh, means healers don't really have to do anything I don't have arc DPS installed right now but um, 
I should maybe take it into some bug strikes on a stream once to show you with Arc DPS just how good it is. Oh, <laughs> yeah, now the name makes sense. 4D. <laughs> I, I, I was thinking, like, how should I say this, but it makes sense now, yeah, 4D. Um, yeah, you could, like, this build becomes better the more you, well, like any build, right? The more you hit some, some of the buttons, especially F1. Um, but this one, like, uh, I'm, I'm not a creator of this build. Um... I found it somewhere on YouTube on, on like a channel that is sadly no longer active. Um, more than a year or maybe more than two years ago. But uh, I do intend to keep it keep it alive. So um, instead of running around, let's I'll I'll get some Jade Bots uh, protocols and let's go to the champion in in the cave as Wari suggested. I definitely want to try something lazy with Mirage, where we allow ourselves to dodge, but uh, maybe spice it up by not allowing ourselves to move. See just how well that works. And uh, yeah, I mean, what could go wrong, right? This has quickly become my favorite spot to uh, charge up my Jade Bots, by the way. I do like uh, Guansang Hill in No Kaineng, but um, I don't know why. Like, I just like coming here, maybe because there's batteries close everywhere. Um, I'm also only gonna stack up just over an hour of the buffs, because we, like, I, I don't think I'll be swinging, like, my auto attacks for two hours. But uh, yeah, you never know. Maybe we have some, <laughs> a bit too much fun. Um, actually, let's let's go hunt down that Moa. See how bad it gets. I know I will have to sidestep a bit because um, it does leave pools behind. Oh, never mind. <laughs> I don't think we'll be able to do the Moa because it's gonna disappear in 16 seconds. I don't know if we can. Uh, I think he goes to a, th a second and third location. So let's see what happens in six seconds. I, uh, hello, uh, LASIK. I actually already did fractals today, believe it or not. Um, I wanted to chill a bit this morning as well. I didn't do recommended, but I did do my normal tier 4 run, as I try to do every day. I mean... <laughs> that is a compelling argument. I could literally maybe just... Like we do like this. Have the game being played for, played for us, and uh, if we're lucky, we find somebody else to enable the champions for us. That that would be pretty pretty neat. Um, but yeah, let's go to Tangled Depths and see what we can cook up. Hello, Exar. Nice to have you. Um, yeah, I like I watch and have watched Guild Wars eight on. In, in my free time, I've, I think I've, I've watched a lot, well, all of the bigger names, definitely. Um, and what I also like to do when I wake up and I'm eating breakfast, I like taking, it's like often then the smaller creators are online, right? Um, and you do find some gems between them as well. So um, there is even some smaller ones I like frequenting. Um, but yeah, Mucklock definitely one of my favorites. Um, Wooden potatoes. I actually have haven't ever caught a live stream. I think I've watched all of his videos by now. Um, I got hooked on his videos with the uh, the lore videos back in the day, and when he made boots bad, or well, when he invited boots on his stream for uh, boots bad builds. Oh boy, this I can already tell this is not gonna work as an auto attack build. Uh, we might need to actually heal a bit. Heal button kind of does the thing. Let's add a little bit, but yeah. Okay, so Guardian is not going to be the player, at least not this build. This is not going to be the play to uh, have the laziest version ever. Um, 
Yeah, Spellbreaker kind of wins over this so far. Like, I can't complain, right? We pressed heal twice, we pressed advance, but this is definitely not as self-sufficient as I, I hoped it would be. Um, maybe we could do Necromancer. I have, I, I have an idea there. Because... Uh, if we can inflict enough conditions with uh, with pistol, I think we can heal from our cursor traits. Oh, and hi, Kami. Um, you can join whatever you prefer to join. Um, YouTube is much kinder in terms of uh, monetization policy than Twitch. Uh, but then again, I'm, I'm not an affiliate on Twitch yet. So I need five more streams, but we managed to get the follower goal. Our concurrent viewer goal seems to be pretty great so uh thanks for that by the way but yeah like overall whatever platform you prefer like i i plan to stream on both and keep streaming on both we'll we'll just do that um let's see i i had like another id what if we took pistol we're gonna be like lazy we're not gonna be doing too much build crafting we are gonna go full celestial go celestial in this slot as well and deal some more damage maybe we can take a sigil that will heal us on crits or something And then I was thinking, curses, because in curses you have parasitic contagion, which heals you for percentage of your condition damage. Um, does pistol one blind? I don't think it does, so this doesn't really matter. Conditions we deal is in damage is increased. Should we like go vampiric presence? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, like it's 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 pretty insane. I I didn't know what to expect. Like I was worried like will Twitch kind of carry over from YouTube, but it it seemingly does. So I'm I'm really really thankful. Um, let's see. Let's hope we inflict some bleeding some way and. This way we can overheal. I don't think Reaper... Oh, Reaper might actually be the play. Okay, what if we... What if we can add some chill instead of some life steal? Will we move? Let's say we're allowed to move. And then Relic. Um, Fractal will probably be the best. I don't know if we can steal health. After blocking an attack, but I don't think we have a lot of self Aegis, right? Um, let's just do more damage and hope we survive. And good evening, Gweos. I think, by the way, Autumn, that I... Like, I'm thinking of the same build. I have one on the Scylla Mirage on, on my channel with Staff. Although, I've been playing it with Dagger instead and it does feel way better. Uh, I have to admit, like, I have converted to Dagger Mirage all the way. Um, let's make this easy for ourselves, right? Like, let's not... Oh, wait. Could we maybe... Um... Let's use minions for now and see whether we can remove the minions eventually. So let's go back to that one heart of thorns hero point and, and that's number two. I do hope... Oh, wait. I don't even have the... I really need to do some map... Oh, wait. 
Am I missing something? Why isn't there a waypoint here? Um, but yeah, let's hope we come up with some, some new builds that literally does everything for us. Oh, I need to enable um, uh, links. Give me one second. I Hey, Zati, I have no uh, idea how to control the bots I installed. I'm sorry, Autumn. Um, I'll, I'll see if I can fix it in a second. And if not, um, feel free to share it on, on Discord if you if you have joined the server. And I'll, I'll check it out on stream. By the way, for the people who just uh, joined in, we're... I want to chill and I thought, what if we could make a build that will do literally all of the work for us? Like, we, we auto-attack. We're just gonna help this person out and... Hope we can try and solo this hero point afterwards. Okay, time for number two. Mech would be the easiest, probably. Well, actually, like, Spellbreaker is, is like, kind of a sleeper. But uh, Necromancer might just do the trick. We're, we're auto-attacking. I should learn to juggle, maybe, in real life, so I can just stand behind and start juggling some balls while we do this. But uh, so far, so good. Oh yeah, Tiki. Uh, Vindicator uh, does help because you dodge a lot of, of damage while fighting. If you, well, because your dodge does half of the work for you. Um, what I find that does help is um, Celestial Herald with either Mace Axe or Swordbow. Like does the trick for me, but it, it definitely is way more active than than a Vindicator. Yeah, this person is kindly tanking damage for us, so I don't think this counts. So let's uh, let's find a second hero point where I actually can reap the rewards as well. Do you think we can do the frogs? Like just stand there. I'll I'll do the tiny frogs first. Let's summon our minions while we wait for them to spawn. Like we uh we take care of these ones real quick because these I don't like them. They're gonna ruin my whole try. But yeah, okay. Auto attacks only. I don't know if if I should move, probably I will have to, because this dude is gonna teleport all over. But we are sustaining the dagger attacks, are we? Oh, I, I will need to move. Oh, that's a pity. We're, we're gonna stick to auto attacks, but uh, we clearly cannot take the dagger attacks. Like, if he teleports too much on us, we would be dead. So we're gonna do the next best thing, and we are gonna run circles around him. Which I hope none of you do get motion sick. But uh, we're just gonna avoid his dagger attacks. But this is looking pretty okay. This is the attack I mentioned yesterday that you absolutely want to avoid. Like, if he doesn't get to use the dagger attack, he's... He's not that dangerous. And a user rightfully pointed out in the comments of yesterday's stream that I shouldn't be backpedaling. Um, so, whenever you see an enemy, try to step sidewards, not backwards as I am doing. I know this is a bit of a do as I say, not as I do moment, <laughs> but there is a massive difference in, in speed. So uh, you always want to try sidestepping instead of uh, going backwards. We might even break the brick bar with our minions, so that is that is pretty cool. This is really important, by the way. Like, if you see a break bar, break it, because um, enemies get exposed, which means they take a ton of additional damage. 
That's why usually when you do group content, people are asking to bring crowd control. And a lot of the um, challenge modes, they rely on you breaking the break bar. Like Cosmic Observatory, for example, starts with a break bar. And if you don't break it, you instantly wipe. Um, a bit of a mechanics check that is in the game, but you do get a ton of rewards. Like it is even worth kind of gimping your own DPS to break a break bar because then 10 people in total will do more damage. So we can't face tank with this. Or not a frog at least. Um, another great hero point to try would be the spiders. Because maybe we could stand still on those. So let's, let's go out there and try killing a spider. We'll come back to this one after, but um, I'm, I'm pretty sure we're not going to be out attacking this one to death. You've seen yesterday's attempt, you'll <laughs> you'll know. Hey Charlie and thanks so much for the kind words actually like I'm I'm so happy my guides are reaching so many people um it it still feels crazy when when like whenever something pops off or when people tell me like thanks to you like recently our discord we had so many success stories of people making a first legendary like back before the update launched a ton of people made their very first legendary rune so they could get a legendary relic for free who had never made anything like this like it's so cool to see that we we have that impact and i see more and more people um ripping away at the new open world legendary armor even and at insane paces like you see the difference when somebody starts making the first piece, it takes a while, but then piece number two takes half the time, piece number three half the time, and then like it starts hitting your stride, and before you know it, you have that second piece. Hey Lex, I am doing great, thank you. I hope you're doing well as well. I haven't I, I've been reading up on I, I still don't know how to pronounce it. Is it Chung Fu or Kung Fu um, P? I have been lazy. Um, we do have a water cooker and, and some of the tea bags you, you basically uh, dip in. Uh, but it like it's really something I want to try out. So I, I might actually do that later. And I'll definitely let you know on stream once I make my, uh, my first cup of finely crafted tea. Because I, I do really love drinking tea. I like, I like coffee. Like, I used to like it for the benefits of it keeping me awake. Um, but those went away at some time. Um, now I actually drink coffee. Like, I try to only drink one a day tops and just enjoy the taste. But I really love tea as well. Um, hey, Vera. So nice of you to be here. Thanks a lot. And welcome Dingo. It's cool to start seeing, like, this is only the third stream, of course, but um, it's really cool to see all of you come back. Like, I really appreciate that. And uh, for all the new people who popped in, I I wanted to chill today. And I thought, what if we try to make a build that auto attacks champions to death? Um, Guardian, or my quick fix Guardian at least, was kind of unsuccessful because we couldn't self-sustain. But uh, Reaper is like seems to do the trick and I don't know if we need this healing like what if we go Harbinger instead um... all of this doesn't do stuff I think Reaper is is still the play okay we stick with Reaper Um, no, actually, like, we don't need it. 
Uh, blood magic is fine. Actually, let's let's see if we can abuse minions. So minions have increased health, which means we have increased health. Oh, minions take our conditions. Well, minions take our conditions, or we get extra damage. Let's let's have the minions work for us. Okay, let's let's see if let's see what this does. We're probably gonna get help from that player, but that's totally fine. Oh yeah, and and Charlie indeed like. Mirage like has been one of the greatest farming classes ever since it was introduced but it like it's it only gets better the more you play it um, and especially like if you have two build slots you can make one like tiny mob farming builds and then the second builds um, which basically autumn was was pointing out as well where you you just dodge and you kill any champion there is. Okay, this doesn't feel like a fair test because the person is tanking for us. I don't know if we can take aggro actually. And otherwise we're gonna try doing what uh what we shouldn't be doing and stand in the bad. I mean we we have a lot of toughness probably. We have 30k HP. Our crit chance isn't ideal, so I should work on that. And <laughs> a ton of armor. Okay, let's try another hero point and like, let's try to up the uh, difficulty a bit. Mm, Mushroom Queen will be our ideal goal. Like if we can do Mushroom Queen without a worry, that would be, that would be awesome. I think we actually have a teapot that would even work for that, Lex. And if not, I like I'm down to invest something in a teapot and, and see what works. And I mean the actual teapot, not the streamer, of course. So this one, this one is gonna hurt us. He's gonna knock us down. Um, I will summon the golem in a second, and then we we spawn the, the mushroom. <laughs> I haven't done Silent Surf CM yet, so um, doing it with auto attacks would definitely be something. Okay, let's see. We're, we're gonna try eating as much damage as we can, and if I have to, I will intervene and, and dodge out of the charges. But um, if we can out sustain, that would be lovely. It seems like we are gonna be out sustaining this. No, I actually only have done the regular Silent Surfer. Uh, I like, I haven't done many CMs. Like I've done 97 CMs four or five times, maybe. I did one shot um, Tonqua Peak CM and got the Dances with Demon title, which I was really happy about. But big credit to four other players. Like, went in there with four friends and they actively guided me through it. So. I still had to do all of the mechanics. I was a, uh, a lag DPS on Spectre, so I, I didn't get a free ride. I had to do a lot of the uh, crowd controlling, and that one was right up my alley. The one that I struggled more on was Arxium. Like, I messed up so many times on that fight, like, I, I don't even know where to begin. Um, like, I managed, but that was not a clean kill on my end. Uh, Arxium, I, I, I was on a struggle bus. Did I? I am going to the wrong hero point. Hey, Barkats. And that is such a cool emote. I mean, soon, right? We do a, a mini guardian comp. One firebrand, one scorch, and three auto attack guardians. Okay, this one will get spicy, I think, but we are gonna... We're gonna stand still with, with the no hands and we're gonna drink something in the meantime. Oh, 
which is um kind of funny if you see me drink fizzy drinks nine times out of ten it'll go it'll be something with lemons my dad actually brought these over today i um after consuming six or seven liters of coke a week the drink obviously because i know financial industry has has <laughs> has its quirks but um i wanted to drink less so we stopped buying soda and then in 2018 i got kidney stones and my doctor told me it was from drinking too much coca-cola so if i drink something it's with lemons which apparently is a bit better but uh we are doing everything we can to avoid kidney stones like i i don't want to deal with those anymore On the flip side, my doctor told me it is like giving birth. So I still can't, but I can kind of relate now. <laughs> yeah, they are the worst. <laughs> yeah, <and then laughs> drinking a new form of Coke, right, Samson? <laughs> yeah, I like my... Okay, no, not my first kidney stone, but the first one that sent me to the hospital was literally... Like, it couldn't get out of my kidney. It was physically that big. Um, that's, like, not a uh, an experience to recommend. <laughs> I didn't, like, I have to say, I didn't get any, like, dopamine or endorphins or whatever, like, you get when you see your newborn baby. Like, all I could think was, thank fuck this is over. Which I... Like, I, I'm out of term if I speak, but I I, I do assume new parents will, will at least be, be somewhat happy to see that they have a baby. Like, I, I didn't want to keep the kidney stone. Um, <laughs> no, actually. Um, so, basically, um, there is there is a components in anything that coca-cola and and most other soft drink um have called oxalate and my kidney stones were uh, calcium oxalate stones the calcium was from a vitamin d deficiency which is something that is hereditary and a lot of people have um basically your kidneys try to draw all the calcium they can get from your bones instead which if it doesn't get filtered out leads to some issues and then the oxalate was due to drinking soft drinks basically so now every now and then i drink a soft drink with um usually with citrus because that actually still promotes like the the flow of going to the toilet and all that shit uh, but it has the benefit of me really enjoying like a can of, of whatever I know, zero endorphins whatsoever. Like, I'm glad it's over, but it's a, uh, like, pass out with cold sweats uh, over. By the way, I'm really enjoying this uh, this build. This is the chill gameplay I was hoping for. Like, we do, we maintain 15, 16 stacks of torments, decent amount of stacks of bleeding, a bit of fire and chill, which inflicts bleeding. Um... And yeah, we were running Celestial Gear. We're playing a Minion Monster, which is always cool. But yeah, but um, yeah, some something crazy. I was, I, I'm the king of stones, so I, I, I think I had like 13 kidney stones in four years in total. Once they started becoming an issue, I also had a gallbladder stone, so I had my gallbladder taken out. Since I, like, had to take a forced break from work, from daily life and everything, um, almost all of my health issues just disappeared. So, like, I, I'm i not a doctor, like, always go see your doctor, but the 100% reduction of stress on my body is has done wonders. Yeah, another Reaper build, and this is a uh, auto-attack build, like... The sword is here, so we just have a sigil. But um Yeah, this this is It's doing it for us. <laughs> I mean 
I probably could make the world's most disgusting gauntlets out of it. And I would probably still scare people away. So <laughs> why not make an infinity uh like make an infinity stone gauntlet? Yeah, this is pure vibes. Like if I could uh have the swords play some tunes for us, I would. We're gonna go to the next hero point because um I told about this one yesterday as well, but the Vine Tooth is basically a DPS golem. Um, but we'll add a twist and we are not gonna move out of the way of its attacks. We're gonna see if we can uh, we can even out sustain that. Because when I I I have an idea to make a video called literally champion builds uh builds for every profession that can solo champions. I not only want those builds to have high DPS, I want them to allow for a certain like margin of error. If you get chunk to 50% HP, I want those builds to be able to get you back up there with minimal effort. If we can even save pressing a healing skill, I like that. Because that means we can still have a healing skill as an emergency or we're not reliant on one ability. Um, so yeah, I, I like taking damage basically to, to test out these builds. Uh, but yeah, Necro is so far going pretty well. Oh, I am the exact same. I actually ask no lemon slice and no ice. I, I don't like the cold of the ice when it touches my teeth. We're gonna go hardcore on this, by the way. We're not gonna move until like 1k HP left. See if we uh, out damage or out heal enough on this boss. I, I do feel like we will need to start moving a little bit soon. But um, like, yeah, we can't complain. We've been soaking way too much damage and he's about 80% dead. So let's do the next strategy and just run around in a circle so we don't get hit by the frontal attack. And if that heals us up, that's just a bonus. But yeah, no cook more for me. I think I drank one cook in the past seven years and um, I do like have to say when it's been that long you really appreciate the taste man like you really do um so occasionally i'll i'll allow myself to have one but the goal is to have it be something special um yeah i can recommend and i mean going down from the seven liters a week that's a lot of sugar uh i don't take in anymore as well Although I'm not gonna kid myself, during my depression I had a, uh, I'm addicted to chocolate face, which uh, which probably replaced all of the sugar I was missing from soft drinks as well. But hey, we're uh, toning down on that as well. Give me one year, you see a new fan roll here on stream. Probably even whiter hair, but all the rest will be new. Oh, enjoy your dinner, man. I actually don't know how dangerous these are. Um, well, not that dangerous it seems because they're veterans. But yeah, this build I'll, I'll definitely share. Like um, tomorrow, I'll share this on the Discord. We have a builds channel with some builds that I haven't had the opportunity of making a video on yet, or I try to mix it up a bit because I don't want to bore all of you with like only build guides. But um, yeah, this this is working out great so far. So this one will definitely go on Discord and eventually I'll make a video out of this because it's too cool not to share when you can let the game play itself for you. I know this one won't count. <laughs> then I gotta make like a... Uh... If I ever make my own emotes, I need to find a funny wise emote. I, I like that. Fandral the wise or whatever. But we can do Fandral the wise, Fandral the white. Um, 
I'll, I'll probably uh, roleplay really hard on that one. I'll, I'll not go outside in sunlight for uh, over a year. So I'm actually fan rolled white. You see like a ghost here that's as white as my wall behind me. Ooh, fan rolled a nice. That's kind of you. That's uh... <laughs> I, I Those are the words I wouldn't say about myself. Not because like I think I'm an asshole, but it like always sounds weird. But I'm um, sure let's make a nice emote as well. Or maybe a... Uh, in the sense of nice. This one is gonna force us to move, without a doubt, because um, when he spawns the bubble, we do no damage, because we, we have a pistol. I should have gone Scepter, actually, because um, I don't know if you know this, but Scepter has, uh, like, ignores projectile, reflect, and block. Scepter basically doesn't attack, but um, they're not considered anything. They're like just strikes inside the enemy model. And let's. I'll, I'll only move out of the circle so we can keep DPSing him, but I'm gonna let him knock me down. Thanks for uh, the follow, Joss, and welcome to the club. Good evening, Marcus. Nice to have you. And hi, Chris. <laughs> Dude, yeah, I did. I forgot buff food. I should have brought buff food. At least I have my experience buff right, but um, let's 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 eat some uh, desserts. And actually, let's like actually use something else as well. This will make it easier. Yeah, that's that's true. Um, literally everything is celestial. So celestial gear with runes of divinity. We are using a relic of the fractal. And sigil of bursting and sigil of ice. I uh, I did zero of the recommended uh, theory crafting, but I'll make sure to add this to the resources uh, tomorrow. Cause I mean this is pretty chill. Like if people are new to soloing champions. This will only go easier if you press more of the skills. Now uh, you probably want a torch in your offhand. Um, and since I am not moving most of the time, I should actually maybe get a sigil of blood instead. And let's start upping the difficulty a bit. We are not gonna skip the... Uh, I think it's called the matriarch. Like the bat. Uh, we are gonna do the bat but we might we might need to dodge the uh, hug attack you were here yesterday covid rules apply we don't hug our enemies give us a friend do your own risk assessment oh no it's not a matriarch it's the brood mother and where are my minions Okay, this is gonna be a cool challenge. I think it will be possible. We we have three minutes left on the timer. So let's uh let's take some damage. The enraged attacks, let's not take those actually. We will be dodging and moving when she's enraged. Yep, Root Mother is, um, I think this was the most intimidating hero point to me for the longest time. Like, I would mess this one up the most, and funnily enough, now I keep messing up the one in Tangled Depths that I, I never messed up when I had less of an idea what I was doing. I don't know how that works, it should be, like, the other way around, but, um, yeah, no. Tangled Depths, like there is one hero point that is the bane of my existence. But Brute Mother definitely gets less scary once you know, like, 
try to dodge some of the attacks and when she gets in reach which is like the the angry red face above her head like that's when you need to like step up your game and really start dodging everything now if i use my uh, golem for example we would be crowd controlling her and deal a ton more damage which would make life so much easier but, uh, that would be against the spirit of this build oh now she's gonna try to drain my HP, so now we need to line of sight. Otherwise she would heal up to like 70% HP, I'm, I'm guesstimating. But we are still well within our time, by the way. Like we're almost 2 minutes in, 20% left. So we are right on target to get this hero point for free. But yeah, Chris, you are probably... Every time we do this, you probably will see me running without buff food. I... Every of my characters' inventories looks like this, with tons of food and utilities. But um, unless it's group content, I literally forget it is there. I figured if I spend enough gold, I'll feel like the moral responsibility to take the food, but... Um, I clearly haven't spent enough gold to make this a reality. By the way, if you want easy rewards, this is the one hero point to do. And I should have equipped a gathering tool because there is no recalcum vein there. But yeah, this is just four tiny minions and one veteran. And the wolves are harmless as long as you don't let them flank you. So. I said earlier, don't walk backwards, it's bad. Well, walk backwards when the wolf is there and you won't get hit. Um, we actually cleared all of Verdun Brink and Auric Basin, so this is going pretty well. Uh, now let's gradually up the difficulty. We're gonna do check first. Actually, fuck it, we, let's, let's go hard. The next one will require me dodging, like that's for sure. Uh, but that should not be a reason not to try. That goes with anything in the game, by the way. Even if you think you might fail at something, just try it once. Um, if you have an idea about what you need to do, that's obviously much better. Uh, we have the hardest of the bosses, actually. And I hope this player... Uh, okay. Turns up soon. But uh, this orange red line will kill you but um as so many hero points run around in a circle and you will be mostly fine like people say the w should be your most used key in my case it's either a or d because this is what i do with most hero points i just run around in a circle and uh right now i can't claim i'm doing that much work because the other player is definitely <laughs> Definitely doing his thing, or their thing rather. But yeah, this is the hero point I usually mess up. And let's see. Um, I mentioned that the scepter does not have a projectile, which is gonna be awesome for the next hero point. So we are basically going to replicate our pistol here. If you are kind of new to the game, you don't need to equip um, like this slot if you intend to use the same offhand as your first slot. Like if you check here, we're on scepter sword now and now we are on pistol sword. So this can save you a ton of gold if you know about this. Um, I don't know if it's explained somewhere in the game, like I found out years ago in a guide, but... Um, if it isn't, it's definitely Arena Net should be. Um, let's not try to hurt this player. It's definitely something Arena Net should add. And actually, Scepter might be better than Pistol because there is more bleed damage. But yeah, this, like. I'm, I'm not gonna try to get this hero point solo at this time of night because there's always gonna be people here. Uh, but we have some of the worst ones left to do. Let's keep the uh, Mushroom Queen as the final one. 
And let's do a surprisingly hard one now. It's not hard in a sense that the boss is tricky, but the fact that if you don't kill him fast enough, there are nine mobs running around who can kind of like lay the herd on you. Um, if you mess up there, it's usually because of the mobs and not because of the boss itself, unless you uh, get knocked down too much. But yeah. Let's still make it interesting though. We are gonna spawn him and we'll just, like, we will run around, but we'll try to deal with all of the mobs at the same time. See how bad it gets. Oh, and this big mob, this should always be your focus. Because he, like this big line he does, will knock you down. But yeah, if you see how many mobs there are here, like this is what is scary. And this is a solid effect. Oh yeah, now we can kind of start focusing the boss. What I will do is drag him closer to the others because project, um, the project has of pistol, they actually bounce around. So we can passively deal with the others as well. Um, if you guys want to see fractals, by the way, I uh, don't mind doing that on stream either. Um, this is the build right now, Quails. So basically... We take everything that gives us damage in curses and especially parasitic contagion for the healing. And we had blood magic, uh, but uh, that he um, asked no carapace and he was right because this is making life much easier. So it's 1-1-2 one, one, in death magic and then 2-1-2 two, two as reaper. So we get even more healing. Actually, I can leave this open. We're, we're managing just fine. I'm sure I am more than done to do fractals with guildies, actually. Um, we did some with, uh, with Zati during the fractal rush events where we, like, very chill cleared all the way from level 1 up to... I think I was there until the underwater one. I forgot which one it is. Uh, but yeah, I'm more than done to do this with guildies, even if they've never done it before. Um, that could be something cool to do. I also want to learn the CMs and let's, let's add 100 to it, 40, because... Um, I mean, why not? Um, but I am not great at the CMs either, so that would be like cool to go through that together. Yeah, if the Mushroom Queen like waypoint is contested, you can go to Rata Novice this way as well. But um, yeah, let's actually let's make a. It was Gwales, I think, who had a like idea I really love where we make a guild community month where we only focus on fractals or well not only on fractals but where we like the theme of whatever we do with the guild is gonna be fractals and let's maybe do that in summer um like I absolutely love that idea by the way Quails um but if we do that in summer I assume most people will be able to Maybe not like in the middle of summer unless nobody is going on a holiday, then it probably won't matter. But, um, and let's start at the beginning. Like, let's give people the experience they might want to, like, have had instead of being pushed into tier 4 without knowing the actual mechanics. But, um, I am more than done to do that. Um, this is going to be the challenge, by the way. I will be dodging or running out of the pools. I'll try not to crowd control and do anything else but auto attack. Um, if it goes bad, I might resummon the minions. But uh, like we are just going to avoid the red lines here. Enjoy the camera, by the way. We're going to try to stack all of the goop 
in one area so we have a lot of movements like space so far by the way our minions are doing great like the weakest ones just died um that is to be expected but the other ones are kind of staying alive and they are doing their damage to like crowd control this one so that is awesome because i think it's 25 percent extra damage on mushroom queen like we take those wins when she's gonna run in a circle she's gonna drop another pool by the way that's when we uh try to move out this is where our damage will slow down by the way the only thing we can sustain or maintain rather is protection um yeah not having quickness you definitely feel the 25 percent difference in damage but i am not gonna complain there is probably some quickness on crit food oh shit i should actually dodge here Okay, we got a sword skill. This is gonna get spice. I am gonna summon some of the minions. Because uh, I don't want to mess this up. But overall, I, I am not gonna complain about this build. Like this, for the amount of work and thought we put into this, this is, this is fine. And now we play my favorite game, kill it, before it kills us. By the way, we are except summoning the minions, like our only attacks are auto attacks. Still. So we clearly have, like it's not great damage, but decent damage. And this is such a pity that I didn't like foresaw this. So let's use our Jade bot. Like this is on me actually. I should have foreseen that I would be stuck in pools without a dodge um that could have definitely been avoided but yeah i'll think about how we make this build better but this was pretty successful in my opinion like this is a hero point a lot of people still struggle with and now you get to see why i recommend doing all of the hero points that's like I should be looking at which one is the most expensive, but I'm a bit lazy. Actually, you know what? We are gonna get rid of all of them in our inventory. So there is one hero point that is not here in the chests because we did it on the Guardian. But this is why I recommend doing daily hero points. like. This 25 alone, to me personally, kind of worth it. To have 7 gold for... At first, you're going to be spending an hour easily. Um, after some time, like half an hour tops for all of the hero points. And hey, Plagan, sorry, I've, I've been... Uh been bad about reading the chats, but at least I see today. Like, that's, that's something. Um... Optimal rotation for this build, I would say literally press everything off cooldown. Like, um, probably we wouldn't want swords, but something like torch in our offhand. For the simple reason that it is much higher condition damage. Where is it? Um, dagger would be really great as well, because the blinds can inflict bleeding and bleeding inflicts bleeding. Um, but otherwise, Torch would probably be better for the crowd control you get on Torch 5 and you get more tormenting damage. Um, but my actual rotation will literally be press 1 through 5 of cooldown. That's it. Um, I haven't made progress on the data. I have made progress on the skins. So this is... Uh... I have a few more actually equipped on my uh, on my scrapper, but this is where we are on skins. The issue I'm running in now, and it's gonna go fast once I start it. Um, the original person he made in he made an extension for Arc DPS that would like trigger whenever the animation started and ended, so he could like calculate on the milliseconds. I am nowhere near smart enough to do that because I have no idea what like 
what language it was even made in or how to make an extension for ArcDPS. Um, but I had the idea of actually going through the painstaking process of filling, filming myself, mining, logging, harvesting and um, add a frame rate counter and then we would just have to all like add all of the frames up. It won't be as exact, but I mean, it's going to be exact enough for both the human eye and we'll be on a decent margin of error. Um, but I got to set that up. Like that's the one thing that is um, holding me back. And hey, Mythos, thank you for popping in. Like really nice to see new people. This is literally the third stream, so I'm still finding my way a bit. We just made a build that can auto attack part of Thorn's hero points to death without any trouble. Like we had to dodge a little bit, but that's it. And um, I mentioned I wanted to chill, right? I like ever since I started making videos, I've been really bad about doing weekly, so like the weekly rift hunting. So I'm gonna log on my um, scrapper, have my mech do half the work for me. And we're gonna collect some essences because it's been a while. Feel free to try to catch like me in the maps. I don't mind. I just wanna like hop from rift to rift um without thinking too much and get some of my uh, weekly farming in because i am behind on my open world armor like really behind actually i am behind on everything if you check my special objectives i still need to do the heart of thorns achievements which i will do this weekend without a doubt but um i still need to do the inner nails mastery 2 achievements um I, I, I need to do a lot in inner nails actually because all of this, this is gold I don't want to miss out on. This is what, 1250 um, astral acclaim and like if we, like if only we spend it on where are the money bags, what is it, I'm, I'm going to take a calculator because I'm not going to do this. That's 35 gold we would be missing and I'm not going to miss that, like it's way too easy of a... Uh, thing to do and hello Jim I am on EU um, David I am on EU um, I kind of wrote a ticket to ArenaNet seeing if they would allow me in a partner program I I highly doubt they will because I know they have admission periods but they don't announce when they are I don't know any partners to like book them the right way for me for me maybe sometime in the future uh, but if I ever do make it to partner I will hop around between EU and NA for like some fun here and there and hello Biggie yeah I see you're a new chatter like it's first time chats nice to have you as well and thank you for popping in this is today we are chilling um, or my version of chilling like, I like Doing all of this mindless stuff where we run around, we clear some objectives. And once I've done my uh, 30 weekly rifts, minus the two we've already done, I am probably gonna gather some. Like, I haven't done gathering in ages except the ice shards. So I just wanna chill a bit, gather, make some gold that way. Probably I'll, I'll show some of the less ran gathering routes that we will do with Blish Hut because I don't know those by heart but um, I'm a big fan of gathering plant nodes just because you can get so many of them in one swing oh okay cool yeah that 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 really helps I've seen you quite a bit in my YouTube comments I really appreciate that um, Biggie like you always leave such thoughtful comments which kind of make me think about the game as well Um, sure, let's let's auto attack solo one tier three rift if we can do it sneakily, like with nobody near us. I am down to do that. And thanks for the follow. As the uh, voice basically said, but really, thank you for the follow. Um, which is obviously behind on YouTube, but I made the uh, like I made the conscious decision to start with YouTube, not for any reason in terms of like building a like a following here or there but rather I could do YouTube on my own time because I was scared I didn't have the energy for streaming I am usually really tired the day after but when I stream I like this is 
energizing to me. So right now I'm I'm gonna pace myself where we like try to end around midnight, maybe 1 a.m. if I kinda don't wanna end the stream. Um but like this this is energizing me. I love doing this. I hope I am entertaining enough. I love the feedback on the Discord by the way, like that I wanna get my both my YouTube videos, like if any of you have seen my earlier YouTube videos and the videos now, I want that difference on the stream as well. Um, like in a year, I am going to rewatch part of my first stream, probably on stream. And I just want to see like to what point we've gotten, like both in terms of people being there in how awkward or non-awkward I get or maybe stressed. Like the first time pressing live, I was shitting bricks. Um, but right now that fear is gone. Like today I was anxious to press live, but a good kind of anxious. Um, but yeah, I I, I want to get the stream to like the level of whatever the big streamers have in terms of audio quality, visual quality. I want all of that. Because um, I, I know for myself, I like it when things run nice and smooth and yeah, so that's the bar we're gonna set for this. Um, game fatigue for me is almost non-existent in the sense that I have a ton of ideas of stuff I want to try. A lot of it is and was solo stuff, but um, by meeting more and more people because of the YouTube channel, I'm starting to get like group ideas that I want to like convert to reality that impossible um in but one week and a half two weeks we're gonna try our cursed strike comp where eight guardians and two scourges will do everything for us take those two raids i hope and um see what happens there probably a month later i want to do my very first fashion event so Let's hope the end of May, but realistically, let's say June. Um, but I want to start like converting all of those ideas to like actual gameplay as well. And um, the more we can involve people, the more um, I, I love it, to be honest. Oh yeah, do get a Griffin mount. Oh, that's cool. Like, that's cool. I, I am pretty good at speaking. Well, speaking. At, at keeping a conversation going. I suck at ending a conversation. Um, so the end of the stream is always a bit funny in my head where I think like when I ended the stream yesterday, I was thinking like, did I end this too abruptly? Should I have been more abrupt? Like whatever, but that's just me by the way. Like that's how I work. Um, but yeah, game fatigue. I, I have too many ideas of stuff I want to try. And um, like the last four years for me have been a like a journey of self-discovery. I didn't know anything about myself or why I thought what I thought, why I do what I do. Um, I miss the ability to naturally motivate myself and get a dopamine release, which aim kind of does for me. I know that's not the most healthiest way of going about it, but um, it probably is why I also can farm mobs for 10 hours on end and literally love it as much the 10th hour as doing it the first minute. Oh yeah, holy hell, 19 legendary since October, man, that is, that is impressive. I have to say, I took some breaks at some points with the legendaries as well to... I, I could have continued, but... Um... I started to feel like I was missing out on so many cool things in the game. Like I meant, as I mentioned, I, I like gathering. I don't know what it is, probably some dopamine related thing as well. But um, I love gathering. And um, when I was making legendaries, once I got past the stage, like my first legendaries were gathering only legendaries, basically where I focused on that. But afterwards I started doing so many other things that weren't gathering where I was thinking like damn I I just want to play one day and gather and that's what I started doing then. Oh 
Yeah, Campionary, and hi, by the way, good evening. Um, I, I plan on making that a mainstay. Like, it's not gonna be a one-off thing. There might be some tinkering. There will be periods where we do more and less. Um, I still need to get comfortable in a lot of areas in the game as well. Like, something I do way too little of is commanding. Um, well, basically because I play solo mostly, right? But um, eventually, I just want to reserve my daily and weekly clears for to do with whoever is online in the guild at that point. Like it, it oh, Amnita's close. That's why it it doesn't have to be like on stream or whatever. But I eventually want to do it, like make it a guild thing instead of me joining a pug early in the morning to to knock them out. So they like I hope to make them a mainstay and we'll probably go through different iterations like if we get sick of the guardian comp um, one of my older videos I actually want to further explore is the we took 10 minion monsters into a raid and this is what we did like those need to make a comeback eventually um, there is also the I took 10 engineers into a raid which means um, Wait, 90 turrets at some point if you, you use the elite skill. So that, that needs to be a thing. And like, I will, well, like that's going to be weekly rate clear, right? Um, I have officially been playing since 2012. Like since December 2012, I bought a game the week before the Winter is the event was live. I didn't buy it at launch. Um, but I played like a minuscule amount of time between 2013 and 2021. Um, that was a point in my life where everything was work. Like I woke up early, went to work, came home late, spent some time with the missus and eventually started uh, like having some variety and going rock climbing because I, I was leading like I was slim as hell, but I was leading a very unhealthy lifestyle in, in like an opposite kind of way. Um, so 2013 to 2021 is a huge gap in my like gameplay. And then 2022, 2023 are what can only be described as being terminally online in Guild Wars 2. Like probably the de degenerate amount of time. But yeah, I so I, I have been playing since 2012 officially. Um can actually like I still have some of the cooler historical achievements. Like the very merry winter's day 2012. Um oh 2013, I actually did quite a bit as well. But um yeah, oh I was I logged in during World of Your World season one. Um but like yeah, most of these were periods where I popped back into the game, but like gameplay was minimal. Yeah, like I, for some reason, when I think like I love the condition rifle ID, by the way, um, Biggie, I love that ID. And I was thinking, what if we made like an actual like sniper rifle, but more railgun style? Um, where every, I don't care if every skill has like 50 seconds of cooldown, but where, you know, like you see a mob and like that mob is getting hunted down. Predator style. Yeah, longbow is pretty great, but even if longbow is pretty great um or even like if it's the best weapon i like having some some variety like i've been playing a staff spellbreaker where is this rift okay i've been playing a staff spellbreaker for the longest time um when doing any of my mob farms and then swapping to dagger axe when i was gathering on it and I just like being able to have the variety. I, I'm not a person like I, if I would at some point get invited by somebody to do a, like, let's say a serious CM progression, I will do what is expected. I am going to play the, 
top class of whatever rule I am expected to do. I'll only play the top builds, use the top gear, stats, weapons and everything. But as soon as it's not something that is like cutting edge, I just like having some variety. By the way, daily reminder, if you see Verdant Herbs, those you gotta gather and thank you for following Mythos. I, uh, I'm far away from the obsidian armor. I think if I did some exo farming, I could almost make one of them. Um, but I need to do 20 more Amnitas meta events. So I'll actually, after we've done all the rifts, I'll show you what I was doing on a daily tour, but I haven't done in the last three weeks either. And I could let you skip farming the meta events and still get enough of the map currency. Yeah, I am on Twitch as well. I initially, I was planning to either go live on Twitch or on YouTube, like either or. Um, as a creator, YouTube as a company seems like they, I don't know, they care more. Um, I'm, and and I'll, I'll, I'll explain anecdotally even. I've had one issue on YouTube. I am like in terms of YouTubers, I am a tiny, tiny, tiny creator. When you need help on YouTube, you have a support button and I got help from a person within a minute and they couldn't like fix my issue instantly, but knowing that they're looking into it, like that goes a long way as if you have an issue. So I, like for that I was thinking like that maybe I should go YouTube because I, I was scared of multi-streaming what it like the technical setup behind it but I found a way that works for me instead of using regular OBS I found that with Streamlabs everything gets done for me um, it, it, it does have a little cost for a full year but like it, I think it's $150 for a full year which to me is great value if it means I can go live on uh, both YouTube and Twitch and let my audience decide where they want to watch me so like whatever is the best experience for the viewer I want that to, to be the one um, but yeah like I know like I, I looked into Streamlabs and they have a bit of a contentious history. Everything seems to be okay now, but they, they had a tool I needed. I just wanted an easy go live button that would allow me to go live on two streams instead of having to set up something with Restream.io or installing an RMTP plugin and having, well, needing double computing power, double internet bandwidth and everything like that's the reason I went with Streamlabs eventually. Like their user friendliness, I can almost com compare it to having like an... Funny, I don't have an iPhone, but I could compare it to having an iPhone against an Android phone. Both were great and are awesome. It's just that with the iPhone, you know the one button does everything for you and Android, you get some customizability in, in return. Oh yeah, um, yeah, warrior, like I, so we, we have a trait in discipline, I think for warrior that lets us swap weapons faster. I hope that trait becomes a, an acquired passive for any warrior out there and they update the trait line differently. So warriors. Um, like Warrior's Advantage will be a 5 to 3 seconds weapon swap cooldown and remove some of the cooldowns on weapon swapping effects. I know they can't give you a 3 seconds heal on weapon swap because it's gonna break the game, but if they could change weapons that way, like I would love it. I do have an Android actually, so um, I follow you there. Um, that was mainly a price. Uh, <laughs> a, 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 a price thing. Um, I broke way too many phones. Well, like I haven't. I need. I need to touch wood. But I haven't broken a phone in the last five years. Um, but whenever I had an iPhone, I broke it within a year. So um, I'm either cursed with iPhones or iPhones are cursed for me. But uh, 
Yeah, uh, Android's got himself a lifelong customer because those seem to last longer. Uh, yeah, that's true. Then again, um, I've resigned to that fact. Like, anything we buy in Guild Wars isn't ours either anymore either. Um, being somebody who was born in 1990 and grew up with a PlayStation 1 and a Game Boy and everything, like, it's still a bit weird and foreign that you don't own your games anymore, but this is like something it used to annoy me to no end, but I realized this is something I can't change and I still enjoy what I'm doing. It just means that let's say the Guild Wars servers explodes, I might never play Guild Wars again and that sucks. So yeah, that's that's the risk we run now. I'm um, actually I have a really great example. I so I I used I played a lot of Diablo 3 back in the day and you had Marvel Universe Ultimate, I think it was called. Like it was a Diablo 3 clone by made by one of the original Diablo 2 devs. And um but with Marvel. Monetization of that game like sucked by the way you like unlocking heroes there would ruin your bank account. But um there was a whole scandal like where the, I don't know if it's the CEO or CFO basically um, was not the front about how funds were being used. And that game closed down with almost no notice. So whatever money you spent in that game was gone. Like the gameplay, you can't play it anymore either, even though it was such a great game. Um, like that truly sucked. And and that is something I hope I'll, I'll never see with any of the games I play or any game for that matter. I like just having even if I don't play them. I love it if there's like variety. Like even if you only play a game for one time or... I mean, every game has its player base, right? And and probably for good reason. Like, but I know it's a reality that one day we might wake up and we don't see a Guild Wars server anymore. Um, I, I... It was Marvel Heroes Universe, I think. I think the abbreviation was MHU. Um, but that gameplay, like there were, there was almost nothing to do in the game, but killing mobs and farming mobs was so, I don't know, it hit the right spot in terms of how the game felt that um, I just couldn't stop playing it anymore. Oh yeah, that would be, that would be cool, Nafra. And, and hi, by the way, uh, that would be cool. Um... Another one of my old favorites was um, City of Heroes and City of Villains. The classes you could make in that game were... Like, those were things of beauty. Um, and how the instances scaled even. Like, if you went into an instance solo, you had different... Like, an instance uh, as in a dungeon. You had different scaling than if you would go with eight people. Um, like all of that I absolutely loved and that is one that I played till the day the server went offline actually. Oh yeah, Marvel Ultimate, no wait, it's not Ultimate Alliance, wait, let me, let me actually look this up while we let our mech farm a bit for us. It was called Marvel... Sorry, I need to speak into the mic till I get a new mic. Um, I think it was called Marvel Heroes. Let's see. Yeah. Um, flashbang warning, because this is Wikipedia. But uh, it was this game, Marvel Heroes. And man, that was so cool. But it, yeah, it got rebranded as Marvel Heroes 2015, 2016, then Marvel Heroes Omega. I would come home. Um, way too late, like eat dinner, watch some TV with the missus, and then I would stay up way too late just killing mobs there. That game, like th the gameplay element hit the spot. They had a ton of Marvel heroes that were all the same, but kind of unique in their own way. And oh man, like I was so sad to see that game go. Yeah, I like... That is such a cool move uh, by, by NCSoft, I think, even, Jim. Like, licensing a fan version 
is really cool. Oh, and we have a fam member here. Hello. Um, like, I love that. Like, the, the IPs still there to be used. And I love that they actually, like, are trying to give a new life to that game. I, I am tempted to eventually install it for a bit of a uh, nostalgia hit. Um, but yeah, no. Like, I... Ever since I started making content for Guild Wars Pseudo, I like I am running out of time, which is pretty great. Like knowing from going not knowing what to do with my day to well not knowing what to do in my day. This is a pretty great feeling again. Oh okay, Sams. <laughs> oh yeah, that, that makes absolute sense. Uh, yeah. Wow, I had some good times in as well, and then I, I did the story time yesterday where I had my, my stalker, but um, yeah, I I think City of Heroes was really special for me as well, because that was the very first game I ever hit a max level in an MMORPG in. Like, time just flew by. And when I hit that max level, instead of going into raids, I just made a new character and I did it all over again. It was just that good. Oh, I think there is a uh, higher tier rift here. Oh no, it's the meta. Wait, we are actually going to do the meta events because I need currency. And if you need gold, um, the meta, uh, the weapons you craft with the meta currency still sell for ridiculous profits. But yeah, like City of Heroes got a special spot in my heart. Then one I actually didn't get to play too much. Um, Hellgate London. I got into that way too late. But um, the the class and the archetype IDs was so damn cool. Like you could be a, uh, for example, a spellcaster that casts spells. Or you could be a spellcaster that uh, cast armor reinforcements instead so basically affect yourself with spells and like every cloud that's kind of their own twist oh and hey mugiwara thank you for uh popping in and and welcome to the club here we have a few people i see actually i don't know how many people oh the we, we have more people than than like is comfortable for me i i know it's not much in the grand scheme of things but it's more than comfortable for me um but thank you all for stopping by like this this is the third stream and it's literally making my, like, not even making my day, it's making my week. I am kind of contemplating not making a video tomorrow, so we do another stream tomorrow. As I already said, we don't ever skip the week ahead. Sunday, I will make the week ahead and I'll maybe chop up some footage into uh, shorts or something to at least make me feel like I, I accomplished something. But um, yeah, I kind of want to stream tomorrow and maybe Sunday. And as long as my energy allows it, I kind of want to be live in the evening. Oh yeah, sure. Um, let's create squad. Secrets of the Obscure. Let's call this meta. Oh yeah, shit. Um, what side of the map is this? East? Feel free to uh, slash sq join fan roll, I think the comment is, if you want to join. And um, when the teleport to friend is in the store, you're like, buy it and you can teleport to me every 10 minutes. Oh, hey, Mox. Yeah, like this is all pretty new, but I, I don't know. I like talking. So this, this is something I really like doing. Um, it's also funny to think about it. Uh, my first stream was Tuesday. I was terrified. Like, I was terrified pressing that go live button. Then I put up the starting soon screen and I thought, wait, dude, you can still escape. Like, you can end stream. Nobody's gonna see it. You can end. Um, I'm so glad I, like, I pulled through. I bit the bullet because this this is so much fun. Um, yeah, I, I, I do want to make some upgrades. Like, Nafra, I, I really appreciated your feedback about the microphone. Um, sadly, I can't increase the gain because um, you get a bit of static with this one, which kind of sucks. 
But I'm I'm gonna invest in a, a microphone that will take my mind of having proper mic et etiquette so I can basically become Stevie Wonder and move my head like this without annoying you guys. Um, the goal is to have the stream daily. Right now, I don't want to say it's going to be every day because um, I still sometimes struggle with energy issues. Like there are days where I am wiped out. Um, but what the stream is doing mentally for me, like this is... This to me feels another like huge step in in my recovery process basically so um i've always wanted to try streaming i find it way more fun than i thought i would find it um so the goal is to have it daily but let's say let's say until summer there might be some interruptions where i go no stream for a couple of days but i'll let everybody know in the discord i'll i forgot to announce today's in the discord oh no no i didn't i announced this two days ago um, I'll, I'll keep everybody up to date in Discord. I'll try to update my YouTube tab as well. But the goal is to eventually stream daily. Um, and usually around the same time slot for now. Like 9.30 p.m. CET go live. And we go live until either I'm so tired I can't anymore. Or when I feel like I need to maybe go to bed. Or, you know, help the schedule and everything. Um, and... Um, I've already mentioned this, I don't stream during the day even though I am at home because my wife helps people with a lot of anxiety and her office is literally a floor below in our home. Um, but when she doesn't have clients, like my, my dream is kind of to have some bonus streams, like have a day of a bonus stream or an afternoon and then just come back in the evening as well. But that's long term, like we're talking end of the year here. Um, Wizard Falls weeklies, I usually do the, like the PvE weeklies, of course. Uh, but mostly the Defeat 100, you can find a story instance where low level mobs spawn. Um, I still need to do the jumping puzzle, but we can do that after. Like you go to a central Tyria squad, weekly jumping puzzle, and you use a teleport to friends. I do almost daily strikes, so... Like that one takes care of itself and fractals as well. If you do a strike, you do the legendary rank mission. I'll show you where to cl complete 10 events in uh, in 10 minutes after as well. Like let's finish the rifts in inner nails and I'll show you the 10 events one. And salvage 50 items, worst case you buy them on the trading post. <laughs> to be honest, Nefra, everything of you is so bright on stream. Like, it's so easy to spot you, and I love it, by the way. <laughs> if you ever join the fashion contest, I might make a round where you have to do subdued fashion just to see what you come up with. But yeah, so the, the plan is eventually daily streams. Um, I, I can always have a bit of a, like, a fallback period, but... Overall, I like. I feel like we're gonna get there sooner rather than later. Uh, what I need to do, but I'm. This is something I'm thinking about. Is like this is my responsibility. This is not for like any of you guys to worry about. I will need to kind of tailor some stream content so I can at least use the footage for my guides. Um, I want to keep my guides the same. By the way, they are gonna be short. They are gonna be to the points. Like. I've already said this so many times, I don't like watching a 50 minute guide when it can be told in 4 minutes. Um, kinda sucks for my own monetization on ad revenue, but um, I would rather have 1000 people watch a guide and they're happy they watch the guide and, and they know exactly what to do. Um, than having the same 1000 people who made me more in ad revenue, but then... They kind of go do it. You could have explained this in like literally minutes. So, um, but I'll I'll start using stream footage for that and just do the voiceover after. But um, that is something that I'm consciously thinking of as well. Um, but that's like all part of the content plan basically. Um, because I love PVE. Um, I almost play no SPVP. Although I kind of want to do that. Like. Do some, some SPVP every now and then and knock out those achievements. I only do World v World now for the uh, Gifts of Battle. Although I've been thinking about some 
If I can convince 49 others of you to join me in World v Worlds, we might have some crazy fun there. And, um, but yeah, that's, that's why I have only PvE dailies or weeklies. Um, because I, I know I'm going to be spending 99% of my time here. Oh yeah, true. I, I, I... I am thinking of the spots. I do the ones near the frog hero point, but I read there was a better one uh, for, for the uh, 100 Mordorum uh, Gueos. Um, right now, I record with... Uh, I don't know what it's called. Like the um, NVIDIA Shadow Play, like the capture software inside my video cards because it puts the least amount of stress on my videos. I started editing in shortcut, but the uh, process was way too slow. Um, like making a transition there would literally take a ton of my time. Um, and I like so I like editing, but I like focusing on the parts that I like the most, like thinking of new ideas, putting those into imagery. And shortcut wasn't doing it for me. So I've been using CapCut for quite a while now. Although I have found ways now to um, do the same with uh, da Vinci Resolve. So I'm kind of playing, like, even though I'm not publishing videos right now, I am still playing around with it a little bit. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm gonna try Da Vinci, see if, if that works. Um, my I have two metrics. One, are my videos still decently easy to produce? And two, um, is the process fun? I will, will gladly take some disadvantages if we can make stuff fun. Like, same with same with the game, by the way, like, if I don't want to do meta events, let's do something else and try to achieve our goal otherwise. Um, but I apply this to a bit of everything in my life now. I didn't have the luxury when I was working, because I solve other people's problems. So, like, <laughs> you have less of, of, of possibilities there. But uh, yeah, now I like this is something I always think of. Like, there's always gonna be things you don't like as much, but if you can make it fun, like, just make it fun. Yeah, I like, I got so scared the first time I installed Da Vinci. Like, that it was way over my head. And um, CapCut really helped, like, simplify everything for me. Cause, like, so. 28th of April, day I'll never forget, was the day I published my first video. I had no clue what a keyframe was. Like, I knew what a transition meant conceptually. I didn't know what it would mean to put a transition into a video. Um, and CapCut kind of took all of the technicalities away from me and allowed me to focus on like the video process, like how how do we make the best video out of this? And now I feel like I'm ready to move to something that is more comprehensive, which is why I want to um, give Da Vinci another shot, because I have to think less about like how does a keyframe work? And for people who, who don't edit, for example, when I do a quick zoom in on the screen, that's typically you do something with a, a keyframe. Um, it's easy to think of like I want to zoom in on this, but then once you get to like the video software, depending on how difficult it is, um, sometimes you you kind of oh shit, not here. Um, sometimes you kind of get lost in the sauce where the process isn't always as straightforward as as the ID that might be like manifesting. Um, and like I know CapCut gets memed on because um, it's made by TikTok, used for TikTokers and everything. But uh, on the other hand, it allowed me to do what I wanted to do and it made videos even more fun for me. So that's a big win, right? And thanks for uh, the follow, Yap. I'm gonna assume I can pronounce that in a more uh, Flemish slash Dutch way. Uh, yeah, and if you don't know me, I am from Belgium. Um, the accent is probably a dead giveaway, although um, something really funny. I do live in the Flemish part. I am mainly a Flemish speaker, but people here think I am a French speaker. And when I go to the French part, people think I am a Flemish speaker. Um, <laughs> so yeah. 
I confuse people. Let's just keep it at that. But yeah, in my guides, unless I decide to crop it out, but I don't think I will, you might see my face a little bit more in the future. Uh, yeah, uh, Prime Subs should be available. This is my third stream. I need four more streams after this. And then uh, Prime Subs will be available. And thank you, by the way, like, even just for considering that, like, all the people who, who, like, going from watching my video to considering something like a Prime Sub or, like, first stream, getting my very first super chat in YouTube, like, I am so damn grateful, because... This is a journey for me. Um, I tend to doubt myself, but like seeing the feedback I get, like, surely makes it worth. Um, but yeah, depending in in how many daily streams I miss, let's say it like that. Uh, sometime next week, I hope we have prime subs and all of that stuff. Um, and. You know how I mentioned I want to make sure production quality is top notch. I'll, I'll try implementing some um, ETS as well for Twitch. I don't think I can do that on YouTube, but uh, might as well have some fun times with that as well. And or loyalty rewards, but I like, well, I don't know what to give in terms of loyalty rewards. Yeah, it's like really fun to see like all the people I get to meet and, and now chat with life because this is a uh, totally new experience, very different from Discord or um, the YouTube comments. And my cat is about to make an appearance on the stream, by the way. Um, but like less than a year ago, I was watching probably the other streamers some of you watch, like Mucklug, Peapot, Laranity, Darren's. And I hope one day I could do something on a live stream and have a, an interaction with anyone, like anyone. And uh, <laughs> so yeah, this like it's crazy how fast the year has, has progressed since I made my first YouTube video. And this is so damn cool. Oh, I so on the cat cam, I, I found a camera that can track movements. If we find an easy way to, like, learn it to track my cat, <laughs> I'm down to install something like that. So you get a uh, live cat feed around the room. Feed it with a D, of course. But I think he just ate, so he should be relatively calm. Like, I, I set out a plate of food for him. Um, but by the end of the stream, he's probably getting hungry again, and then you'll see him more and more. Or like yesterday, when he wants me to go to bed, he goes and sleeps on my like the hand I use for my mouse. Because um, he knows I, I give in faster than he does. Like, he can be uncomfortable much longer than I can. Um, so if I end stream early some days, like, blame the cat. And then again, don't blame the cat, because he's way too nice. But yeah, he's, he's already started to claim its territory on my desk right now. Like, he's next to my mouse. I can still move my mouse decently, but uh, it's getting there. Um, yeah, and if you're wondering, I am a literal slave to my pets. Like, I, I, of course, treat them the way you should treat them in terms of food and everything. I don't want them to be, like, unhealthy or overweight. Um, but other than that, I cannot say no to them. Oh, um, if you haven't yet, Samsung, we have a pets channel on Discord where once a month I announce the bestest boy or girl of the month. You get absolutely nothing for it, but you get to brag that yours is the bestest for a whole month. And um, whoever wins it and you ask it on, on stream, I will reinforce that statement. I might actually have to make a starting or ending soon screen with a like an employee of the month uh, frame, but bestest of the month. So feel free to share there. Yeah, exactly. Bestest pet. 
and uh, nobody can convince me otherwise. Of course, when you ask somebody who is the best pet is, like theirs is always the best one, and all of them are right. Like if I say my pets are the best ones, I am right, but if you say it, you are right as well. Like if yours are the best. Um, but at the same time, we have a bestest ward because of that. Oh yeah, like I, I like watching animals, like animal pictures. Um, it doesn't have to be a dog or, or a cat. If you have like a Komodo dragon, they can win bestest as well. If you have a uh, pet snake, they can as well. But it has to be a pet. Um, you don't take a random picture of an ant and you're like... That one is not gonna get elected bestest of the month. That would be doing disservice to anybody uh, else's bestest. Uh, have a good night, Atom. Thank you so much for popping by. Um, I don't know if you posted a link on, on, on uh, Discord. I kind of got sidetracked. But I am down to play a bit of Mesmer uh, on tomorrow's stream. Because yeah, let's go live tomorrow and I'll play a bit of Mesmer then. Or actually, if any of you have a very, very different pet, like, I am down to check them out. And uh, you might get bonus points if you own an alpaca, just saying. And you get even more bonus points if you uh, film it prancing around in the backyard. Okay, but if you have an ant farm, you might be able to win the bestest pet, but it's for a single ant and you need to be able to prove that you can track that ant wherever, whenever, as much as you can track a cat that also goes outside. So I'm fine to see disappear in the ant farm, but I've got to see some proof. Like if you have an ant that is has like a black body and a white head, naturally, please don't go paint your ants after this stream. Um, I am down to reconsider. But the like the burden of proof is going to be on you. I am not going to make sure that ant is the same. If it looks the same as all of the other ants, they are out of luck. Um, the earliest frame that can be cancelled, uh, Plagin, honestly, it's gonna be down to experimentation. Like, right now, it's kind of a gut feel. Um, oh, actually, no. Um, when the final resource comes into your inventory, and even then you'll need to experiment. If you own a consortium harvesting sickle or the molten one, um, you need to wait out the gold swing. And sometimes you could see the resource coming into your inventory slower. But um, yeah, it's going to try to determine the sweet spot when that last resource comes in. Um, I'm afraid it's going to be a bit of like experimentation. And um, if frame counting doesn't work, I, I need to find a way to reach out to people and see if they can help. With, uh, with that kind of project. But I do know that the original creator of the add-on, or like not ArcDPS, but like the extension to measure um, basically the activation and the cancelability of the tools, he doesn't play anymore and his Reddit account is inactive because I thought about reaching out over Reddit, for example. I mean, if you do not try, you want to try like I guess, but don't feel forced to. <laughs> but um, yeah, like I, I would love if we could come up with a solution. If we can't, I am gonna try brute forcing it with a frame counter. Um, but if we, like, I, I would love to be able to give a, a self-updating spreadsheet, and when new tools get introduced, like new skins, we just add them. Um, but we need to find a procedure to do it right. Oh, let's actually check. Let's do, uh, before we do the 10 events, let's do a quick Discord check, actually. Oh, those are so fluffy, man. Holy hell, those look so fluffy. Let's first 
parties. But uh, those look so damn fluffy, man. I like those. I want to see my dog. I posted her somewhere and my cats as well. This is uh, other people's uh, pets. Oh, actually, I opened the channel with my dog. There's a cat you will see on stream eventually. Uh, but people have the cutest pets. So this is my dog. She's a uh, rescue from Greece. So uh, she had to travel quite a quite a way. Um, I think she was abandoned because she has some basic training, which kind of sucks because apparently people take them for like, when they're cute and puppies and then ditch them. Literally fuck those people. Um, but yeah, we're trying to give her the bestest life ever. And he's like blossoming. She went from not knowing what to do with a like a ball, tennis ball, football, whatever toy. Um, to now when she sees us and she sees the ball she wants to play. So that's pretty cool to, to see. But yeah, Zams, your, your pets look so damn cute. I uh, I like it when they're fluffy as well. Oh, and by the way, um, Ruru, if you want a very fast 10 event clear, go to the southern part of a, um, what is this called, Dragon's End. And go to the silence, like Silent Surf. This is a good daily to do as well, because you do get some Jade Rune Stones. But every room you clear here is an event. So if you have a complete 10 events uh, challenge, like this is definitely the one to do. Or if there is a daily with complete dragons and events, this is like literally the room to do. But yeah, measuring like the, the the tool speed is gonna be a bit of a challenge. Like if, if somebody can find a programming solution, we'll definitely go for that. And if I can help in some way or shape or form, I am more than done to do this. Because uh, right now we are using a six years old spreadsheet. So basically no tool has been updated after and not all of the quirks have been documented. And I'll get to that in a sec. So. Even at worst, I am down to do a more rudimentary fix, but at least we get to add the new tools, right? See, like everything we do here, by the way, is an event. So these get, like these take care of the weeklies really quickly. Um, but yeah, on the tools, so there are certain tools. One of them, for example, is the glacial logging tool. It's said to interact faster with quickness than any of the other tools. So if you... Um, have a character that has quickness every time they gather, that might actually be a better logging tool than the Unbound Magic one. But right now we just don't know. Um, same, I've read a lot of rumors about the Super Adventure Bear logging tool and about the Looking Glass logging tool. There are people who claim it's much faster. Um, the Firestorm one as well, but I think that is, I'm, again, I'm not sure here like there is no proof but i think there is a bit of a mix up with um it just being faster because of glyph of industry and something getting lost in translation um but yeah if we can like find ways to for sure for sure or kind of for sure tell like i would love to be able to e even if i have to go through the pain of counting frames with a uh, like a program I I am done to do that and for the people who don't want to for example join on discord which I totally get by the way um because I mean discord has its own reputation I'll just post them to reddit as well like I just want to see this tool make it to the community um by the way when you finish here um kill these hermit crabs if you have a jade sliver uh, module because you one-shot them and every now and then they give you jade slivers. And I mean, it's going to be four or five jade slivers max. So it's not much, but I mean, it is jade slivers, right? It's 11.30. So instead of finishing the three other rifts, let's, um, let's first log our necromancer and try auto-attacking a tier three rift. The, uh, see how much I like that. Don't. Let's find out in about 10 minutes. And after that, I'm gonna do some daily gathering just because, like, I don't want to end the stream before I have gathered something. Like, I did the um, Eternal Eyes today and 
What else? Oh, winter berries, because I like gathering winter berries and they are one of the most profitable cooking recipes still. Or using one of the most co profitable cooking recipes. But I want to do some gathering. Have a good night and thanks for, for popping in. Thanks a lot. That really means a lot. Thank you. And uh, let's not kid ourselves here. We are going to get Jade's bot protocol. So. <laughs> I'm not gonna go as hardcore as, as we can go. I do wish we would get a, uh, like the stations inside the Thousand Seas Pass, but that would probably be too much of a quality of life, but that would be cool. Um, I, I don't know if it's me, by the way, with the lag, but I uh, was watching um two other creators stream earlier like big big creators who were complaining about it as well so i wonder if it's like a uh if it's a twitch thing or if it's copium on my end because i'm hoping it's not me like both are a real possibility here okay we need to craft one uncommon no one rare motivation uh, but I think I have more than enough resources. Uh, oh wow, I ran out of... Uh... Oh yeah, I, I sold a bunch of materials. We are actually gonna have to buy some. Yeah, the rest should be fine. Yeah, I was like I was watching like guilty pleasure of mine. I like watching NMP lol. I don't know any like people who watch or used to world, watch World of Warcraft. Even watching them cook is such a chill stream. Um, but I saw they had issues as well, and then I I can't remember who the second one was. But uh, I hope they get this fixed by the time we get a uh, affiliate, so I can do a. Uh, Make a whole celebration <laughs> thingy out of it. Um, let's see where where are rifts this week because we might as well do this in a. Let's go to Straits of Devastation. Feel free to join me in Straits of Devastation for the tier three. Um, I know it kind of defeats the purpose of auto attacking, and if none of you joins me, you get to see me suffer probably. So it's a win-win. I, I I really think they are Nafra, especially if you've seen their, uh, I don't know what, but they seem to like increase intensity, especially since um, Extremely joins OTK. But yeah, they like, I, I, I am guessing a large part of it is stream persona, but um, they played so damn well. I don't think I can convince my wife to come on cam ever, so you'll never see a dual cooking stream. Uh, but if we ever scam some company like HelloFresh into um, sponsoring me, I will do a cooking stream, though. I, I haven't, but I will. Just in case people want to join. Um, create squads. Let's... Let's do Central Tyrius. Oh, no, no, wait, Rift Hunting, that's it. One... Rift. Oh. There you go. Let's do one of these. Um, to make it spice, I'll try to not, not dodge the... Um, the Rift boss, and if we... Like, un until... Until it kills me. Like, after I use my Jadebot uh, rescue protocol, I will do some mechanics, but um, I'll refrain from doing what I should be doing. Yeah, I'm, I'm guessing there is a big part of, of Persona. Like, I don't know if you watched, like, the old Asmongol streams when he streamed on his main channel. Like, person he was on there compared to Zach Rar was such a big difference as well. Um, he was one of the only ones where I checked out both streams. Like, I almost never watched Zach Rauer, but, like, I, uh, I know that was a big difference. Um, but yeah, I assume 
I should maybe do this a bit more as well, like the exaggerate some stuff a bit more. Uh, but I know that is like the kind of the trend or the tendency on Twitch, I guess. Although I'm I I'm never gonna go too extreme because that wouldn't be me either, I guess. Also, everybody joining me on this rift, I am so sorry for my contribution because it is gonna be low as hell. technically but i don't want to put that out in a video because it can get abused but if you um if you lead a squad for tier 2 and 3 rifts you could just play a herald enable buffs and don't do anything and you will probably get all the contribution you need <laughs> okay so there is two of us already <laughs> I mean, if we can convince 49 others to do this. I keep thinking I'm uh, playing my engineer, so I want to use one of my uh, minions to teleport. Which uh, wouldn't go over well. But yeah, here's another like idea I had for um, rift farming. Like, what if we could make a squad full of engineers, and if we find, I I don't know. Like, I'm gonna need to do some actual maths for this. But if we find a map where the rifts are close enough so our turrets do not despawn, we leave our turrets and we just oh shit! I am using a skill. That's not the we leave our turrets at like a point that uh like we split the turrets in three groups of 15 because that's 15 times four turrets that's 60 turrets and we just rotate between the rifts and see how that goes um yeah okay we do not absorb the big attack that is uh within the realm of possibilities of this build but uh yeah that was another idea i had but I need to find a map where all of the rifts are close together, so it needs to be one of the smaller maps, maybe... I wanna say Lake Doric, but um, getting a squad there is gonna be a nightmare with all of the... Um, with the AFK farmers. Uh, but yeah, that was another idea I had. Like see if we can uh, automate rift farming a bit because that would be that would break the gold per hour we could be getting probably if we could do like because you can spawn a tier one tier two and tier three rift at the same time right so if if we just spawn them consistently and we make sure we refresh our turrets in a uh, orderly fashion i don't know how that would work like maybe assign subgroups or whatever um, that seems like a fun sa Saturday afternoon to me, to be honest. All right. Um, farming. Or gathering, rather. Actually, I'll show you one of the things I like gathering. And if I accidentally start typing in game, my cat is uh, attacking the keyboard right now. Um, yeah, I, I like gathering verdant herbs for all of my um, cultivated seeds, so for the Ascended Fool, which has a great spot in Lake Doric, a great spot in Biora Marches. No, Seven Seas doesn't lose you your protocols. Um, I am gonna assume we don't lose them either in... Where wouldn't we lose them? In, um, if you have the Lily of the Elon Pass, but um, yeah, no, Seven Seas doesn't lose you your... Uh, oh, Seven, yeah, Thousand Seas, that makes more sense, you're right. Uh, Thousand Seas doesn't lose you your protocols, um, which is why I spend more time there than in the 
like Mistlock Sanctuary nowadays. Because Mistlock... Basically, the Mistlock Sanctuary is considered a part of Fractals, so you lose... You lose whatever uh, advantages you have in there. By the way, if you like running fast, either get Troya Pinata Tonic or the Executioner Axe Tool, and um, you can run fast. Well, if you have super speed and quickness, important disclaimer. Do they? Wait, we can actually check this quickly. I healed on my uh, Cursed All Turret builds earlier today. Oh damn, this is a problem. So we need to be able to... We would need to be able to run to the rifts. That's gonna make it more challenging. Yeah, that's gonna make it more challenging, but... um, I refuse to give up. But uh, thank you for mentioning that now. Like, imagine I didn't like this, this beforehand. I invite a bunch of people and then we mount up and we realize, well, this is not going to be the afternoon we hoped for. Oh, man, I'm so happy you mentioned that. I... Yeah, I, I like I know there were a ton of other um, things. Like there is a whole list on the wiki of stuff they nerfed. But basically, you could uh, at some point you could uh, break CC bars with a consumable. You could even heal with a med kit that you could get from a heart fender and stuff like that. But yeah, kind of makes sense why they nerf it. But uh, it's it's a pity at the same time. On the other hand, they do like. They've been working on fractals as well. But yeah, this is like what I like to do as chill content. Sometimes I, I pop open Blitz Hut. Oh, and this time I have Blitz Hut on screen or on stream. Um, let's see. This person, Lady Elisa, went through a ton of effort, like Tech It and all the others, by the way, like literally every one on here is a champion because these make the draw the heart um the arrows you see here but i've been enjoying lady elisa's guides so much um although i'm i'm shilling her right now this is actually the fast farming amazing pack <laughs> they've, they've they've got less routes but all of them are worth running like you can run them every hour it's mainly verdant herbs and muscles i think uh, but definitely worth doing Yeah, I, I, so at some point when I wasn't there yet on, on making videos, I wanted to make my own markers. I checked how it was done and I gave up before I started. Holy hell, you gotta, unless you know all the coordinates, you need to like, you can physically mark everything in game with Taco and then you can still adjust coordinates based on your needs. But uh, definitely something I wasn't ready to are doing and then we're getting some chill lo-fi vibes from the music at the same time like this is literally like if i want to relax this is what you can see me doing yeah in taco you can record your routes and then uh i think with any text editor you can open it up and still uh alter coordinates all of these people are definitely not AFK, by the way. Um, so yeah, like you can get most of the work done with Taco, but I, yeah, I wasn't ready to go through the like all the trouble. I actually think Ticket has a great uh, written guide on his website, so that might be uh, worth checking out. Out? Wow, I'm starting to add th everywhere. Um, but yeah, like it's, it's a bit more effort than, than I would like it to be. Although I read on the, uh, Blizzard Discord that they might add it someday, but it's a, uh, soon TM kind of situation, if I'm not mistaken. Oh yeah. 
that is a uh, that's definitely worth considering because prototype rewinder should work um we might also be able to teleport a few people with the white mantle portal device once every what is it 1800 seconds or whatever the cooldown is let's check yeah every 1800 seconds we get a teleport for i guess 10 people but um yeah, that's definitely gonna make it harder, but I'm I'm not gonna give up yet. I wanna I wanna find a way where we uh we we make turrets great again in this game. And I'm doing my damage. Like I introduced a turret healer engineer, which uh, does surprisingly well. Like your group can fuck up on on annoying encounters like Bone Skinner, and you will be mostly fine. And it has so much Aegis, but that's thanks to um Ford Bow 4. Yeah, I figure we might as well pick up some Jade Fragments along the way, because it is free volatile and unbound magic. Well volatile because of the tools and unbound because of the map. Um, but wouldn't the Jade Turtle also despawn our turrets uh, an Afra or do you mean for something else? Because um, we need to keep our turrets alive. And if not, yeah, we're going to be running. Uh, but that does not have to be an issue. That just means some people need to play Scrapper, or we all play Scrapper, because, I mean, our turrets are going to do our work. Oh, no. Sh yeah. No. Oh, no. No. So we don't have super speed without our... Fuck. Huh. How do we solve this? Because 5 seconds of movement speed on 21 seconds cooldown, like that's not something we're gonna gamble with. Oh wait, maybe some turrets come to the risk. Wait, rifle turret doesn't give us anything that is a well, that's neither. Okay, we have... Five out of twenty-five and seven, so twelve seconds out of of super speed. So we are missing at least fifteen to be really comfortable. Um, oh man, this is this is gonna be a uh, this is gonna be a challenge. But I I'm gonna give it a think and and then I I'm gonna postpone the thinking a bit because I'll need to check the maps as well, like. With the spawn range of or despawn range on turrets is rather, but uh, it would be so cool if we could just activate rifts and circulate between all three uh, three tiers and farm everything at the same time. Yeah, the position rewinder that might be definitely a good one, and um, I am a big fan because we, I mean, you can easily farm that in an hour because you need 245k karma so that is something that like won't be locked behind gold um, but you would need the access to the sand swept isles um but yeah position rewinder is definitely a tool we will want to use and i mean even if it doesn't work science right <laughs> go all with thief guilds. <laughs> um, okay, here's the deal with thieves guilds. We go with thieves guilds. And um, whenever we are fighting the rift boss, we, so we need to be a dead eye. We go with thieves guilds. We use the traits that will let us reduce cooldown by 20% for every enemy we kill. 
And whenever we fight a rift boss, we also need to draw in four targets from wherever and make sure we tag them. So probably more than four targets if it's a squad. Uh, but I mean, that could be fun. And maybe like I'll see if there is a module or something. Speaking about position rewinder, I, I am never like I never do this on time, but let's try. Oh, and I can still gather some nodes apparently. Well, let's not do that immediately. Where is that rewinder icon? Oh. Yeah, we are on top. Oh no! I uh, I pressed the wrong button. We fly back. Never mind. Uh, but yeah, there. Like, if you have ways to break the game like that, because now that you mentioned thieves guilds, remember my idea where we uh, go into world v world. One person plays a n oh, man. I am messing up uh, royally. Um, one person plays a non thief build, and he just gets followed by forty nine thieves who strategically go into stealth right before he meets somebody, or ideally before he meets a zerg. Like, um, what if we all equip thief skills? That's uh, that's a lot of thieves to to deal with. Yeah, if you like, at some point, like the the death of gold per hour is standing around and not knowing what to do or standing around uh, in front of the Chagarin's wall especially in Tangled Depths by the way you can go and gather um, jungle plants which can give you Maguma lilies which still sell for half a silver per lily um, there is only a chance though so it's not guaranteed but um, like whatever meta map you're in if you just go gather a bit you make more gold per hour than if you are standing still. Now, if you like standing still because um, you've got some chores to do, by all means, stand still in the game. But otherwise, this is basically something that uh, is always worth doing. Okay, let's try to not mess up with the rewinder this time. There should only be three herbs here. Nice, we didn't mess up. Uh, so the varietal seeds you get with the um, the cooking achievements. Um, you need to get to. I don't know, it's 400 or 450 cooking and you will be invited by, uh, I think it's called Simer Oxbone or something. Uh, a Norn that will be in your home instance and you need to do a couple of achievements to become a master, che uh, a master chef. Um, and one of the achievements has uh, basically has you gather cultivated seeds and from that point onwards, you can get um, some of the like the rare seeds on verdant herbs, mature plants, which are a ton of in Ascalon. And I think there's one more, uh, but it's definitely worth getting to 400 cooking because another thing you can get is... Um... Fuck, I forgot the name of it. Like it's... Uh... You make cured meat out of it, but it's a... Uh... Let's use one of these because otherwise it'll stay in my bank forever. Oh, I forgot I can't use when I uh, move when I use this. Uh, let's see. I sold them recently. You can get cuts of red quality meat from uh, killing any type of wildlife. Um, and they are 
like getting up there in in price again they used to sell for like six copper for the longest time but right now they are selling for over a silver which means that if you like farming in in regions like corna for example you like you start getting more and more goals for killing wildlife there um so yeah like at least one character definitely recommends getting to you'll get to level 500 cooking um there is a great guide to follow on gwcrafts.net actually um that will also save you quite a bit of goals because a few of the achievements like level up your cooking by like 10 levels at a time um but it's definitely worth doing for both the meat and uh, and the seeds otherwise i must admit farming verdant herbs probably not the best farm um i've unlocked this about three or four years ago and i keep forgetting it's a prerequisite um and yeah if you can make so you need i think at least 450 cooking for ascended food and um if you do the achievements you get at least one garden plot in your home instance um if you plant four seeds there and you use a glyph of bounty and the item booster you'll probably get about eight to nine ascended seeds um oh. it's cultivated so you could be getting like eight or nine of these which is pretty well pretty much worth it because what is that that's three gold and a half for for doing an achievement every day and gathering those takes less than a second and then if you have the gathering plus from the gem store you can get up to 24 to 30 seeds a day um no it it applies to all characters so every character can go through the quest separately but the seeds and the meter uh, unlocks a count wide so at least you're like just do it on on one character basically that already has cooking at 400 um and then yeah whether you want to do it on the others or not it's mainly up to whether you want to see like the quest i can disappear in your home instance but it doesn't really have that much of an impact anymore Um, I am gonna do a little bit more of gathering and then I am probably gonna go to bed if I wanna like be somewhat fresh tomorrow and I'll show you my favorite place which is literally just sand swept tiles run around and it's gonna be a bunch of mitral and a bunch of elder woods but it's chill as hell here oh yeah and it has gardens like normally gathering these daily is definitely worth as well um there is one in dry top actually instead of doing the whole islands i'll show you a few of the gardens because those are nice and i like seeing all of the items flow in Yeah, like definitely some of the achievements to do are cooking. If you own Icebrood Saga, um, there is an achievement called the Hungerer, which will get you trinkets much cheaper. Like I send the trinkets than uh, the regular Living World Season 3 and 4 ones. The door, those are always worth doing as well. Because you can basically pay off a big with the uh, ice shorts and 75k karma i think for one i think it's one ring one amulet one necklace oh and then if you kind of wanna uh want a life hack if you have a uh, ascended ring you can't equip an exact copy right but if you attune or infuse the other ring you can equip the exact same copy as well again of uh, the ascended rings it's a uh, it's something i used to do to well save some currency basically 
Um, one garden definitely worth doing is like near the Beetleton uh, dungeon. Oh, and that's something I want to try on stream as well. Like, um, see which dungeons are easy to solo for a dungeon frequent or achievement. But yeah, you have Lettuce here, which res like all of these respawn 23 hours after you gather them. And I think on server resets as well. These are always nice picking up. And there are onions as well. And I know Nike published a video years ago that makes onions a meme, but uh, you do need a lot of them for cooking. And then probably the most well-known garden is in Drytop, uh, north of the Vinebridge Waypoints. And I actually need to do one more point of interest than three vistas. Maybe I... Maybe I am missing out on a key here. And yeah, this is on top of the uh, flax gardens, of course. Like there's multiple uh, locations with a ton of flax. Those are worth gathering. I actually don't think I have done those today. So uh, while we're at it, let's just add those to the list as well. Um, it's definitely worth buying because you can buy it with um, you can buy this with karma um, buy sickles of bounty because every swing has a chance to give you extra whatever you're gathering and thank you for following Manhattan and welcome I am uh, showing a few of the gardens to gather around in the open world actually and in all just do this, because I have a tool that copies waypoints for me. Um, like gathering plants in this game is wildly uh, profitable, as long as you know what you're gathering. Um, there's a ton of plants that aren't worth a thing, but some of them are definitely worth it. And thanks for uh, the follow Zele as well. There's a... Uh, a bit of following activity. I I always get like a, a little rush when I, I hear the notification now. Bicycles of bounty, sure. Like you finish a race and you get some you get some fruits as a reward to stay healthy. I'll start uh, enunciating my spaces. Bye. A sickle of bounty. <laughs> yeah, I like I like I can't unhear bicycle of bounty now. Uh you ruined that for me. Get a sickle of bounty. <laughs> this playlist is cursed because this is giving me oriental vibes the moment we get to sorting Saitung province. Um I feel like the the whatever CIA or whatever is behind this is watching us. Which would make sense, because um, ArenaNet is in uh, Washington. I know I need a tinfoil hat after saying that, but... Uh... All of these locations I'm visiting, by the way, gw2efficiency.com, enable the plant nodes, and uh, they have a nice little map that will tell you where to go. I've, I've mentioned it yesterday, I like disabling uh, Blizzard pathing once I get like comfortable with locations. Uh, I don't know why there is literally no good reason. I know people who, who prefer the, the opposite. Um, but yeah, GW2 efficiency literally has everything you need for these farms. <laughs> exactly right. And this is a playlist made by another uh, YouTuber, by uh, Harris Heller, who does awesome, like, I, he's, he's very commercial, like, always, but that's everything. Like, every reviewer for a product you watch online, ask yourself what do they have to gain from this. Um, if I start telling you in a year to buy tons of, um, Tons of copies of Guild Wars through a referral link. Like, you know, it's because I'm making money of that. Like, it's not something I am planning to do, by the way. 
Uh, but Harry Seller is kind of like, I want to say guilty of that, of shilling some of the products he is testing too much. But he has made a copyright free playlist that works for any content creator to use free of charge, which is such a cool move by him. I think he does get um, ad revenue on it. Um, I have YouTube Prime, so I don't get like ads in between. But if you have Spotify um, or I think Apple Music, like the paid version, you don't get ads either. And the beats are kind of okay. I tried to Streamlabs beats yesterday. I sent them an email because my video um, didn't get copyright claims, but I got a warning that if like any ads are placed on that video, like the revenue is not mine, but part of like whoever owns the songs which is kind of a shame because Streamlabs kind of guarantees you being able to use their music which you clearly can't but um I haven't had any issues with Harry Seller's music I uh, yeah Frankfurt would make sense um I think most gaming servers are there maybe a few in Amsterdam but like I think almost every game I played has a uh, like Frankfurt server. I'm I'm not too familiar with like everything in Germany. Like I've been to Köln a few times and that's it. Um Oh and the whole Mosel area. I shouldn't forget about that. Um but like I feel whenever there is server infrastructure is needed, you go to Frankfurt and whenever you want to launch a tech startup, you go to Berlin instead. I don't know why that is, but I feel like that's like how it's laid out. Oh yeah, and these, yeah, okay. I think I already, like I should have known this, but there, um, I think the stock market servers are in Frankfurt as well. So it would make sense there is a, uh, a huge infrastructure there. By the way, something that like absolutely baffles me um, when you, and baffles me to this day. I haven't seen another stock market except um, the well, the German ones like Citra and, and whatever you guys have that levies a church fee when you buy stocks. Like, I, I mean, we pay the same kind of tax in Belgium, but it's just like calculated within our personal taxes, I think. Uh, but it's funny as a foreigner to see we are paying like a tiny fee, like a few cents every time we buy a stock for um, German churches. I am from Belgium. Um, yeah, I know the accent is... Uh, Especially, I don't know why, I, I feel it's heavier when I'm live streaming than the videos. Maybe because it's unscripted. Um, let's see how the accent evolves in a year as well. Maybe we laugh about it in a year or maybe it gets worse. <laughs> Something like a Jersey accent for Americans. Yeah, it's like, it, it's a ridiculously low amount. It's like 25 cents, but um, it's literally called... Um, like there is multiple words for taxes right and it's one of like the synonyms but it's like literally church tax i mean yeah it's probably gonna set me apart as well like i know um if you watch larenity like as a belgian i can hear she's uh, from the netherlands uh but since i met a lot of uh, dutch people in my life i always like those accents as well Oh, I do love Scottish accents though. Um, and actually, my f the vacation where I have probably some of my fondest memories of was in Scotland. We did the um, the West Highlands way on foot um, years ago now, nine years ago. Um, I think we did it in eight days, which is like the medium intensity tour. Like I know you, you can do it in six, eight or ten. And we stayed at, in bed and breakfast along the way. Like that was so awesome. And we were kind of shook. So, I mean, we go to Scotland. We have an idea of the weather there. There's enough rain, winds during all periods of the year. So we packed a lot for 
like changing weather like clothes that we could like either lay wrong that would be uh waterproof that would still allow us to cool down when we remove layers we went during a um during a heat wave we had i think one hour of rain and the rest of the time was 30 30 4 degrees celsius when we were doing the west island way and uh we made a very um embarrassing mistake like every time we would pass one of the distance markers we um felt something was off and i think we were like 30 miles in our trip before we realized you guys do miles instead of kilometers so yeah that was a uh that was an embarrassing moment <laughs> yeah it was may 2015 like never gonna forget that but um the pictures we took of all of the, 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 the lakes, the locks, are they look photoshopped, but they aren't. It's literally like bright blue sky, blue lakes. It was amazing. Oh, well, um, as a foreigner, Nafra, we didn't get the option to get out of uh, church tax when buying stocks. Um, and like, none of my clients really cared that much. But um, I had a few clients who would like check every single cent they were paying and uh, explaining that I couldn't like one of them didn't want to accept that I couldn't just call Germany <laughs> to not pay the tax. So that was one of the uh, toughest discussions of my life basically. Yeah, yeah, like I, I know it's on, on uh, general income, but I meant like we couldn't opt out of the... Uh, when we bought the stocks, we couldn't opt out. Like it was there for us to to pay. I mean, like you you basically got like all the appropriate taxes. There is Belgian taxes, of course, as well. And then search tax. But yeah, like Scotland, hands down, that was that was an amazing trip. And um, sometimes rough, because when you do mountain tops at 30 degrees Celsius and um, there was almost no wind and no shade, um, did get rough at times. But overall, like I, if I I could redo it and and had to choose, I would choose the exact same weather just for like the sights and how nice it was. And also I kind of can stand the heat really well. My wife can't, she might have a differing opinion, but I I just loved it. I'm gonna change to the uh, just chatting screen by the way, cause I am gonna wind down the stream. I uh, removed the gameplay uh, box on the bottom left cause it did make sense to remove this. And now wait, I have an idea cause for some reason, Oh no, I can't. Wait, can I? Yeah, okay, I can. I'm gonna put my webcam in front of me because for some reason I... I'm watching myself and I can't stop glancing over the sides, which means I miss my microphone when speaking. Uh, but yeah, as I mentioned, I'm, I think next week I'm gonna order a new one so I can uh, move a bit more freely and uh, I mean gonna be fun to have some some new stuff to to play around with because i am a typical guy in that way i do love um <laughs> i do love taking gadgets but yeah like scotland hands down one of the coolest i want to say the coolest but we went on a honeymoon to um Ile de la Réunion, which is a french island but like off the east coast of like central africa um and that comes really close as well. Like that was the furthest trip I've taken in my life, probably that I will ever take in my life. Like I am not scared to fly, but I I hate airports, man. I hate sitting around. And I had to do that way too much for work. Like I, I didn't fly that much for work, but I um, took the Eurostar and if I can skip sitting around in a hall, I, I will skip sitting around in a hall. Plus we have a dog now and I don't want to go on a trip that would stress her out too much. So if we go on a trip, it's probably going to go by car. And I mean, she comes with us. Cat stays home. Um, I think he would hate me if 
I dragged him along. But that's it, yeah. But yeah, I I have no clue what happened in the past two and a half hours. This shit flew by for me. Um, I am still ever so grateful for everyone who popped by, followed, watched. Um, basically, Twitch is coming down to just me being there for four more days. Um, because all of the metrics seem to be achieved. So I like to thank you all of you. That's so cool. Oh damn, I am <laughs> Gwales that like that puts me in a great spot. I am 183. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm just within like the, the, the height limit of flying. Yeah, like I'm apparently I'm like ideal flight height, but um <laughs> yeah, you got that three centimeters that uh, kind of ruins it. But yeah, yeah, same with uh, Bilal in in the YouTube chat. Like apparently you don't want to be too tall on an airplane. I can't complain. Um, my wife is a bit like smaller than me, so I think it's fine as well. But she hates the waiting around as well. Like sitting on a bench and having stores that look cool, but there is nothing really cool to buy. It's really not my thing. And I discovered that I am kind of introverted. Um, I'd rather not sit. Uh, I'd rather not sit in a hall where there's like hundreds of people rushing past me. So yeah, if I can avoid flying, I'm gonna avoid flying. Unless maybe one day TwitchCon, right? Um, I don't know. But that's that's way in the future. Uh, but yeah, with that, like. Thanks all of you for being here. I will be here tomorrow. I'll post something on this course. Um, that means my videos will take a tiny bit of a hit. But uh, yeah, that is what it is. Um, next week I'll work on finding my rhythm. So we're gonna mix videos with live streams and then see, uh, see what happens when I make videos and stream on the same day like maybe i go awol for a week maybe i don't but um at worst you have the sunday videos right so with all of that i am out have a good night and whoever goes to bed sleep tight whoever starts their day i mean have a nice breakfast man see y'all